previously on Vegan Athlete. My name is Jake Mace. I'm called the Vegan Athlete. I practice the traditional Chinese martial arts. This includes Qigong, Kung Fu, and Tai Chi. Born in British Columbia, I've lived here in the deserts of Arizona for the past 25 years. You've watched me build a thriving and edible desert garden and edible landscape here on my Vegan Athlete YouTube channel. I believe gardening will change the world for the better. And although my desert garden was thriving and I was getting closer and closer to producing 100% of my own food at home, I decided to change my life and leave the USA forever. My girlfriend Nicole and I sold everything we own and put the rest in a backpack, then took off to see the world together. We begin in Portugal. We would use a variety of programs during our travels, including Woofing, the worldwide organization of organic farming, a program existing in nearly every country, which merges workers with farmers, trading work in exchange for housing and food. Novatero, or New Earth, is our first farm. Located in Orique, Portugal, and run by a German couple, Novatero put us to work right away with a variety of projects. The food at Novatero is vegan and incredible. Our hosts, Reinhard and Kirsten, are not 100% off the food grid, but they are experts at preparing delicious homemade vegan food and storing or preserving a variety of food, much of which is produced on site, such as olives, tassalis, and herbs. Reinhardt suffered a heart attack three years earlier and went vegan as a means of healing his organs. He calls this his second birthday, which happens to fall on Nicole's birthday, May 20th. Welcome to part two of my Portugal experience, which begins right here where part one left off. Morning guys, it's morning in Portugal. Hello Nicole. Good morning. We found some cherimoya and this is our breakfast this morning before we start working. Yep. You like it? I do. Yummy, yummy. It's your first one. What does it taste like? Mm. It tastes like kind of like a banana, kind of like maybe like a little bit of a mango. Um, there's something else I just can't, can't put my finger on. Mm. Mm. All right, enjoy. I'm not gonna lie, the days were hot, the days were long, and the work was tough. But certain things made it all worthwhile for me, like the flowering olive trees. And of course, Kirsten's vegan breakfast with homemade bread, spreads, and herbs from the garden. Babe, what are you doing? Cutting some lavender. Why? So I can dry it out to make tea. This is wild lavender. Yes. It's everywhere. It is everywhere. It smells fantastic. Why are you just harvesting a little bit and then moving on? So I don't want to like totally decimate, you know, I don't want to take this whole thing. I want it to be able to come back next year and gotta leave some for the bees and the other animals and stuff. Can't be selfish, you know?
Hey, so now you're just chilling in the uh, woofing apartment. Mm -hmm. And you have all your hard work drying on the windowsill. Yeah. Let's check it out. That looks great. Thank you. How long does it need? A couple days. The property of Novotero was a beautiful place, but one thing brought Reinhard and I together, and it was the drone. He loved photography and videography. He had a drone himself, and the two of us bonded, going to different places around the area, flying our drones, and comparing the footage later on on his computer. Lass mal kicken. Er will mal kicken. What did you just find in the pool? A salamander. Don't let it bite you. What does it bite? Should I put him back in the pool? Well, he wants to go in the pool. We should go down and let him go in the lake. Crazy, amazing. We call him Sal. <laughs> What's up, Sal? Oh, he's, he's like a snake. He's like squ squishing out of my hand back into the net. <laughs> That's awesome. I know. They're so cool looking. Wow. He's hiding under the rose. <laughs> Sal, you are really hilarious, man. Finishing up the work for the day. And uh, I'm putting away the equipment here in the closet and what I found behind the door. It scared the crap out of me. It's abandoned, but this thing is serious. Come check this out. Look, look behind you. It's so freaking big. My time in Portugal at Novotero felt kind of like a whirlwind. There was work, there was laughter. There were experiences in the surrounding areas around the farm. There was delicious vegan food and late night philosophical discussions with Reinhardt. There were beautiful sunsets and peaceful mornings, but there were also the horses. Now we want to go outside with Jampa and Gandhi and some friends, but only with two horses. But we have to protect the hooves. So it's really hot here, the underground in Portugal. So we have different kinds of protection, like this one here. These are coming from Spain, and these are horse boots. Okay, down. Okay, fantastic. So you are vegan? Yes. 
We are vegan. You come from the Vega. <laughs> we are vegana. And you are a vegan who rides horses. Do you think this is okay or what do you think about this? This is not vegan, but I think it's okay why we are training the horses that they can carry us. But vegan, it isn't. Do you think it's always okay to ride horses or does it depend on the person and the situation? No, it's not okay to ride horses when you don't have the knowledge about horses and their physically and their condition and their muscles. You have to know a lot of things about. Normally horses are not born for riding. They are like other animals. You never would ride a chicken or a goat or something. Yes. So this is not, not made for us. So the people choose this to be with horses and work with horses while these are very nice creatures or how called this in English? Creaturen, creaturas. Creatures uh, or creations. Creations. So these are fantastic animals. They are so sensitive. In my page I have written about the soul of the horses. They want uh, to go in contact with our soul. So two souls are looking for each other. Jedi Knight. How do your legs feel? Pretty sore. Well, I feel like they're going to be sore. What do you think, jumper? I know. No big deal. Just going for a run in a Portuguese eucalyptus forest with Nicole on horseback. Just a typical day. <laughs> hey. What? Okay, so you just uh, dismounted the horse and. Just get this, get this.
The hardest part of this first woofing experience for me was being completely out of routine, having to, in a sense, reinvent myself in a foreign place. It was challenging to live out of a backpack and be at the mercy of someone else for food, housing, laundry, showers, transportation, and internet. It was also very difficult to put in the labor, the work, the hours, and the effort it needs to run a successful farm, but have it go to someone else when I'm so used to having my efforts go into my own garden and my own urban farm. All these things aside, Nicole kept doing yoga, and I kept doing the martial arts. And before we knew it, our nearly two weeks were over. Portugal done, check, check. All right, back here at Fushera train station. And I didn't realize before I was too tired, but there's a Nispero tree, loquat, with fresh fruit everywhere. Maybe we'll pick a few loquats for the road. This is your first loquat, your first Nispero. What do you think? It's good. Ooh, it's sour. <laughs> that one's not quite ripe. <gasps> Ooh. The ripe ones are at the top, but we can't get them. They're up there too far. Can't pull down a branch. I can't. <laughs> Hi, guys. Jake Mace, vegan athlete, quickie video. I'm here in Portugal at Funchera train station heading to Madrid. Just got done woofing at Novatero and waiting for the train and I see this giant Nispero tree. Loquat, look at the size of this guy, it's huge. Loaded with fruit and uh, getting a little bit of a sweet snack before the train comes. Mm, with some lettuce down below. And this right here, I'm gonna say, really quick bonus, this looks like purple tree collards down here. Really rare variety of tree collard. Purple tree collar looks like it right there, collard greens. Instagram, my Jake Mace Tai Chi Instagram has been messaging me saying if you're in Portugal, go to this AO26 vegan food project restaurant. I was here on Monday two weeks ago. It was closed. Today it's open and uh, Nicole and I, we're going to go there and go on a vegan adventure together before our train to Madrid leaves. Okay guys, we checked into AO26 Vegan Food Project, but they were reserved until 9.30. We had no idea, and at least 20 other people came in after us, had the same problem. They wanted to eat spur of the moment, and they said we are reserved until 9.30. So they were nice enough to let us order and do our dinner takeaway. So Nicole and I got the exact same thing, and it's the Bloody Beet Burger. The bread looks fresh, homemade, looks amazing and the side of the sweet potatoes, would you say? Mm -hmm. Sweet potato fries with like a homemade um, mayonnaise. Nice. And then we're gonna get to eating this, but we just walking through Lisbon, we're in Old Town Lisbon, and we saw this cute little table set up with this cafe, so we ordered a beer, 
and we ordered a glass of red wine and we ordered a one euro cup of plain coffee that comes with a cinnamon stick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good, one euro for a small little coffee with a cinnamon stick. <laughs> now we're gonna just for 25 minutes enjoy Old Town Lisbon. <laughs> How is it? Mom. Hi guys, we're finishing up. And we got the dessert <laughs> the Oreo, peanut butter, chocolate, pie, or cake. <laughs> Very, very good. The next step, we'll see you guys on the train from Lisbon to Madrid. I realized a lot about myself, a lot about people, and a lot about the earth in Portugal. I learned a great deal about off-the-grid living, including water wells, solar power, growing your own food, and more. I have such a desire to design and build my own off-the-grid property from scratch and use woofing as a teaching tool which will pull the best parts of each country into my own farm. I love that I'm traveling with my best friend Nicole and I hope she will want to build and live with me in the middle of a food forest garden and grow together. The most powerful part of Novotero and Portugal for me was the way Woofing shuffled us together with Reinhard and Kirsten into the very fabric of their lives. The conversation, the traveling, eating, working, and the outings with them taught me so much about people and how important relationships and connections are if you want real happiness, success, and balance in this world. When you travel, you can never be sure what your most life-changing and memorable parts of the trip will be while they are happening. It's often upon reflection that you realize how cunning the universe is as it sends you experiences which carve you into the person you have become. What will Spain have to offer? What experiences will Spain bring? What people will I meet? How will I change again? Will Nicole and I stay together? I ask you one question, will you join me?